Hey everybody, it's Andy with Inland Filament, back in the Maker Lab at Micro Center. And in today's video, we're going to be taking apart the hot end on this Ender 3 Pro so we can get a closer look at what's inside. Stay tuned. So I've been using 3D printers for over a decade now. And while printers have come a long way in terms of reliability in the past 10 years, it's still good to know the ins and outs of your printer so you can more easily troubleshoot it. What we're gonna do in today's video is take off this fan shroud here on the print head and then look at the different pieces that make up the hot end. Hopefully at the end of this video, you'll know more about the parts of your printer and be able to troubleshoot it more easily. Let's get started. The first thing to do is figure out how we can remove the shroud from in front of the hot end. On this Ender 3 Pro, we're gonna take these two screws off, one on the left side and the other on the top. This cover is often referred to as the fan shroud as it holds the fan for cooling the heat sink, which we'll see in a bit. It also holds the part cooling fan, which sends air across the part as material is fused layer by layer. I like to move this out of the way and hang it up over the back of the X-axis once it's got enough slack. This gives us a better look at the hot end now. Starting at the top, you'll see the Bowden tube, which normally comes in white, but people often switch out for a Capricorn tube later. Check out one of our previous videos where we do that exact upgrade. This tube is what directs the filament from the extruder motor through this pneumatic connector all the way down through the heat sink to the heat break. The heat break is a small part between the heat sink and the heater block, which acts to transfer minimal amounts of excess heat up through the heat sink. The heat sink acts to dissipate the heat from the heater block so it doesn't melt the filament too early before it gets to the correct spot in the nozzle. This whole assembly can be usually removed by just taking out these two Allen screws from the heat sink. Although, if you need to remove the pneumatic joint at the top, it makes sense to do that while the heat sink is still attached to the X-axis. This also goes for the nozzle. Looking down here, you'll see a silicon sock that is meant for insulating the heater block. It makes it more efficient and also adds a bit of protection. Once we take this off, we can get a better look at the heater block and see a few wires making their way into it. The larger set is for the heater cartridge, which is what ultimately heats up and cools down the heater block. The second set of wires goes into the thermistor, which acts as a thermostat for the heater block, helping the heater cartridge heat up and cool down to keep a consistent temperature for melting the filament. Finally, at the bottom of the heater block is the MK8 nozzle. The MK8 is the version number, not to be confused with the fact that the nozzle has M6 threads. On this printer, we currently have a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, but most new printers will come with a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle. Not all nozzles are created equally, so make sure if you buy a replacement nozzle, it's right for your printer. It's worth noting that if you need to change or replace the nozzle, you'll most likely need to heat up the hot end to around 190 or 200 degrees Celsius in order to break up any clogs or hardened filament that might be holding the nozzle captive. Now that we have some of this vernacular down, it's a good time to ask, well, why would we want to know all these parts? One of the reasons you might want to know the parts is because if you're asking a friend or a community to help you troubleshoot why your printer's not printing, knowing the name of the part will help you get to the solution way quicker. Also, if you're looking to upgrade the parts of your hot end, knowing what to look for out on the internet and what might be compatible with your 3D printer will also help you get to a solution more quickly. Some of the most common problems that you'll face take place here in this assembly of the printer. Things from clogs, the thermistor not reading, or the heater cartridge not heating up are all things that are gonna happen in this area. So again, knowing what the parts are called can help you troubleshoot that and get back to 3D printing more quickly. If you're interested in learning how to troubleshoot some of the common problems that we just mentioned, leave a thumbs up and a comment below. But ultimately, we hope this was helpful and we hope now you have the confidence to troubleshoot some basic problems that you might run into while 3D printing. It's really not as scary as it looks. I remember the first time I opened up a hot end, I thought there's no way I'll ever get it back together, but I've done it a ton of times at this point and I'm glad I know how to repair printers. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below with your favorite 3D printer tips and upgrades. 
follow us on our other social channels, and we'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center with Inland Filament.